Abargani, Islam, Hatet Pu, blessings. Uh, my name is Bandele, Chief, actually Chief Noble Bandele El Amin. Uh, I'm here a chief in what we call New Kemet, which is located in the place where they do business called Dayton, Ohio. I'm here today to give you some light um, and to promote my book that I have written. It's called Wake Up Africa. You can see it there. And basically, this is a video for uh, some insight on what I wrote about in my book. So, now that you know a little bit about me, I like to talk about the book. Like I said, the book is named Wake Up Africa, and the reason why I named it that was because I wanted to uh, use a word that was like to play word, to play tricks on. So, for example, we say wake up, and then I, which is I myself, my person, must wake, must free. It's ka. Now, the word ka is a comedic term for soul or spirit. So basically the book is entitled Wake Up and Free Your Soul, Free Yourself. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so it's a basic book, uh, especially for those who have no knowledge on any African-centered lifestyle or any African-centered history. The other part is that because I am a Moor, which I am, uh, I consider myself a, a, a Washita Moorish American, uh, indigenous, uh, it kind of goes into that perspective because, it, you know, I want to show the African centered perspective, but also the Moorish nationality and how important it is to have your nationality despite uh, your your philosophical beliefs many of us Moors and uh, you know black nationalists or or afrocentrists they have a problem with Moorish Americans uh, you know I guess their religion or their lifestyle and how it may seem to conflict with the afrocentric movement which I, I really don't believe that because I come from an Afrocentric uh, black nationalist movement, you know, uh, you know, Marcus Garvey, you know, all praises due to him, all praises due to all the ancestors, you know. Uh, so it's not a, it's not an issue of that. Basically, this book is trying to make a merge to show the, how the two actually go together in a lot of ways. Uh, but what I'm dealing with basically is going to be the three aspects of your human psyche that, that I'm dealing with. And those spheres, if you will, is the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. And so so basically those are the three spheres that we deal with. And what I and so what I mean by physical, the physical is talking about the physical realm in general. Uh, I go into it and talk about Gab or Gaia. Gaia or Gab are, uh, you know, Gab is comedic for the physical world in general. Uh, Gaia is being the term used for uh, the, the earth. So what, what I'm dealing with in that realm is the earthly realm uh, for people who are esoteric understanding the earthly realm is really dealing with your lower self or your uh, the earthly physical the materialization of, of, of thought the world so the physical world in general that means that I, that you're talking about the actual physical flesh man or woman woman or you're talking about the even the law of the world, or we're talking about the uh, your community in which you live in. That's part of the world. That's part of the earth 
or the physical realm. So when we look at that, we say, are we, are we taking care of our own bodies, our own physical flesh? Are we taking care of our own communities? Do we have control over either of those things? Okay. So I get into that. Uh, I also deal with the uh, relationships, if you will, uh, uh, male and female relationships because of so much of uh, slavery or should I say Holocaust because, you know, a lot of us know that slavery did not exist really in the capacity that the historians have projected. However, we know there was a devastation or there was a, um, a Holocaust with POWs of African or, or, or people of dark skin national people that were stripped of their nationalities and and because of that they were put into a second class citizenship. So because of that, that's also part of the physical um, the physical realm. The other part is the mental, your mental being or the mental sphere. The mental sphere uh, deals with what I, what I claim is your brainwashing technique. It's the, uh, for lack of a better word, the Willie Lynch syndrome that has been placed upon the psyche of uh, many of the African or uh, dark-skinned people. So the brainwashing technique is also dealing with um, your, your, your environment. And that's saying like, television, radio, you know, for older things. And now you got internet, you have um, you have your environment around where you work. This, the society itself is the environment. So when we talk about tradition, you know, many of us look at traditions and say, well, Christmas, Thanksgiving, or misgiving, uh, these type of things are considered tradition. And because of tradition, you, you, you tend to just do these things year after year, habitually, without thinking about it. So, you know, we talk about the tradition that we've been placed in, uh, which is pretty much European, uh, European, as many call it. Um, but we also have the brainwashing techniques that are used by agency, government agencies, for example, CIA, which used uh, different brainwashing techniques, uh, has used the uh, drug LSD in many instances. Uh, so we have that. We have the mind trick of, of education is a, a mental uh, brainwashing technique used by the powers that be that are in power they use the education system which is basically been uh, used to dumb down the masses in order to make you a uh, worker drone for example uh, like factory work you know GM uh, Chrysler or Bayer these type of places uh, do not require much effort in the mental capacity as far as thinking is you're, you're a drone. So we're looking at education, we look at how education teaches the youth, predominantly people of African or dark skin hue, they're teaching them from a European or a Western uh, ideology, which is brainwashing the youth and uh, because of that you're, you're given 12 years and you know, once you've got 12 years, it's very difficult to try to change that. So we get in, I get into that. I also get into the uh, spiritual being, which is very important. Uh, being the spiritual being is looking at uh, spirituality versus religion and the difference between the two, how religion may bind and tie you back into a particular way of thinking where spirituality uh, allows you to uh, develop your spiritual being. So you, you, we look at that. Uh, we look at the difference between what is a god and uh, what you know is that being male or female or neither. So you know we look at different various uh, aspects of 
religion being Islam, Christianity, Judaism, any of those three, uh, and looking at the spirituality of our uh, ancient forefathers and foremothers, which predate uh, the three major religions I just named, and takes you back to a time when you could cultivate the spirit and it, the techniques that are used to actually do that. So we're going back to the time before the Holocaust that we have here. Uh, so basically, that is what we're going to talk about. Uh, also, the other part is history. We look at history, uh, very important in this book, uh, dealing with history from prehistoric time all the way to, time, to now. When we look at prehistoric, we're looking at the time uh, before Ice Age, any of those things. We also look at what history has been portrayed by uh, Western, Western history and how it contradicts a lot of what we see in history, what we're finding in archaeology and what we're seeing uh, in our so-called so -called black historians. Uh, for example, one, one, one of the things we look at is the fact that many times when we look at history, we look at like Ice Age. We think that the whole world was in an ice age when we know that that was a northern region that was in an ice age. However, the southern regions are closer to the equator, like places like in Africa or India, those places, South America, those places were not affected in the same way with the climate. You would have still found very uh, hot, humid areas. In, 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 very, in, in a lot of instances, you see the... Uh, region change from a lush green area like the Sahara Sahara, and you look and you see how it become desert now so because of climate changes you see a change in the way the civilizations existed but you also find that you see uh, the 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 the, the 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 region being unstable, um, you know, this instability in northern Africa because of the dryness of the Sahara, and because of that, you will be you'll see uh, the vulnerability of North Africa. So we get into that as well. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, that's really what we get into. Uh, I did want to show you briefly the part about nationality. We talk about Moors and uh, we talk about the Moors Americans, the Washita indigenous people, what that is and how serious of in, that, that's been taken out of history. The Moors paradigm has been taken out of history because it connects you back to a legitimate time in history when we thought we were slaves, when we actually ran the world at that time. Uh, I had a map I wanted to show you behind me where actually how this map has has on it if you can see it this is a map of the Mithric Mysteries now I was talking about Mithric which is a uh, a religion dealing from uh, Eastern uh, Eastern philosophies but on this it had the map of Africa Northern Africa this right here is Northern Africa and here it talks about this right here is Mauritania if you can see it that right there is North Africa and it's called Mauritania on this map what's important about that is that what's important about that is that it shows you that Mauritania with the word Maurit Mauritania means more a Moorish land and how Mauritania was really North Africa and West Africa was considered Mauritania and that land is all Moorish we were not taught that in school we're taught that the Moors conquered Spain and that was it but there's a lot more to that and we'll get into that